Today is Saturday, July 30th, 2022. Um, it's technically day two of JavaScript for websites. It's not something that I'm going to do every day, but I'm just going to call it like day two, you know, like just my progress. It's not like Blender, data science or web dev that I do every day, um, where each day is literally the day following after. Um, it's just, it's basically logs in my case. So in my case, um, I'm just going to be going over this challenge real quick today. Um, and that's it. All right, so this website has HTML tags and CSS, but no JS in it. Add a script tag to the bottom so that you can manipulate the website with JS. So that's right before the body. Okay, next step. Inside the script tag, use the line of code that we showed you to replace the contents of the web page with a custom message instead. It can say whatever you want, as long as it's a few letters. As long as it's a few letters long, we'll explain more about that line of code. Works okay. So I believe that was that was document dot body dot inner HTML um, equals hello world. All right, and if I remember correctly, basically this is targeting the HTML of the web page, and it's replacing it to be hello world and this wouldn't work if it was above um, the body because right now it's telling um, JavaScript is saying okay well whatever the body is replace it with HTML but we haven't even seen the body yet right and so how can we replace it with hello world um, right if we haven't even seen the body um, and also it overrides right so it's a hierarchy like if this is already here it overrides I wonder if I delete all of this right it would make sense that it works because there's nothing in the body um but it kind of overrides if it's after so it's at the bottom all right let me do one more let me actually watch this video and i'll be back all right so my summary from this video is okay um i basically learned how to access right the dom so the dom again is a document object model and it is known as an api and it is also known to make every html um, element an object so that javascript can kind of play with those objects right and so in javascript you would access the dom which is kind of like a replicate of your website that the browser makes right it transfers kind of like the HTML elements into objects in which you can now access through javascript and so in javascript the way you access that dom which is the replication of your website is through the document so you do document dot body if you want to access the body and the inner html and then i can do something right like change what i want the inner html to say so that's one thing um and then pamela um right the author or the host of this video i don't know um she says that there's other ways to do this right and there's other um use cases for this as if i were to you know want to access an id or a specific class or a specific element rather than the entire html page um but yeah that's that's what i learned from here okay so now i'm going to go ahead and practice when you're writing JS on a web page, what is the name of the global variable that represents the DOM? Is it a document? Okay. It's a global variable. Which of these lines of code would replace the content of a web page with con? Document.body, inner HTML. What sort of data type does the document variable store? Objects. That is interesting. So the document variable, okay, so it's a variable and it stores objects, right? It makes sense. Right, because again, um the dom is a replication a replicate sorry it's a replicate of the website that the browser tries to make and then that replicate 
um, or that DOM can be accessed through JavaScript through the variable document and in that variable document it holds in those objects that were in the beginning were elements like HTML elements and so basically it transfers right from HTML elements to objects and then those objects are stored in a document variable which is the DOM um, the document object model and then I can access that through JavaScript okay trying to get the fundamentals here document object model the DOM is a set of functionality that browsers provide to enable developers to access and manipulate web pages okay All right, so now I'm going to watch this video. All right, nothing really new in here. Um, she just kind of introduced the um, developer tools, which I was already familiar with. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, I mean, the only thing new for me, I guess, it's not new. I mean, I don't know. I briefly learned it. It's just variables, but like that's common sense. Okay, next. Ooh, this is the one I had. I'm so excited for this one. All right, I kid you not when I say that kind of cat like Pamela, like she's, I'm gonna cry. Like I spent, when I was doing like my initiative in empower.py, I was having so much trouble trying to apply JavaScript into web dev. Like I had no idea how to use it. And I'm just here and I'm like, I know, like, Look at how quick she explains things and like you understand it like 100% like oh my god this is amazing. But anyway this video um, basically showed me right how to get um, the element by NID um, and then I kind of just made my own page real quick because for some reason the developer tools don't work on here specifically for the heading or maybe it's just me but whatever. I just made my own page um, in my notes app real quick because I don't have time for complex things. Saved it as index.html, opened it, and then this is my page, right? And then I just did control shift I, and then I can clearly see the console um, output that ID, right? Um, so that was great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and practice that here. Let's see if I can do this. This web page has an H1 with a placeholder name in it. In this challenge, you'll use JavaScript to replace that with your own name. For this first step, declare a variable and store the element inside it. Okay, so I'm gonna create a variable. Um, where's the H1? H1. Hello, where is it? Oh, over here. Okay, so H1, I'm gonna call it heading L, just like she did. Set it equal to document dot get element by ID. And then what's the ID? ID name. All right. So, okay. So I made a variable. I could also just do that right um yeah so i made a variable heading as an element i accessed the dom um and then i ax um whoops and then i'm using this get element by id function i'm not sure if i should refer to it as a function or a property um and then i access the id that's the next step now it says, now that you have the element stored in a variable, use the inner HTML property. Okay, so I'm assuming this is a function and then inner HTML would be a property, right? Um, add it to your own username. All right, so in this case, I believe I have to do document, nope, not document, heading l.inner HTML equals to set i aren't they oh isn't that really nice okay that's beautiful all right so that's really good and if i wanted to i could also just now that i think of it 
I could have just done document dot get element by ID ID name how would I change it document that I'm going to heading dot inner HTML equals to so I meant this another way that I could have done it without using that variable okay that makes sense all right so just wanted to also write that down maybe I could why is my computer so slow right now it's another way I could have done it okay spin off whoops nope can we go back please all right so that's done let me watch this video now I'm assuming it's gonna be get class by I mean get element by class all right, so I learned the functions get element by class name and get element by ID. And I also learned that if I uh, either use get element by class name or get element by tag name, which um, get uh, offer or outputs an array of multiple elements, then I have to use a for loop to go through that array so that my, so that JavaScript can go through and affect each um, item in that array, right? Okay, so. Let me move on. Okay, so this web page uh, uses divs to create name tags for a few famous computer scientists. In this challenge, you'll use JavaScript to change the text of all the H1s in the name tags. In this first step, use document get elements by tag. Okay, okay, okay. So let me go here. I just realized I wasn't using semicolons earlier. My bad. All right, so var for variable, and I'm gonna say heading. L, oops, um, and then is equal to document, that's a DOM, get element by um, tag, and then I believe it's H1. What tag is it? Hmm, get element by tag. Oh, elements. Okay. H1, but that's not. Where's my HTML? Huh. Oh, it's a P tag, not an H1. Okay. That's where the name says R, not is get elements by tag is there something else that I did wrong elements by tag name okay and then to check if that works I'll do console log and then do heading L and then I can't quite see it here I don't even believe It said, oh, hello, my name is, so what are we replacing? Oh, whatever. Um, anyway, I just wanted to really quickly, what's going on right now? Copy this and then go to this notes, which I saved as index.html and then reload this and I should see, right, the array the html collection and i have you know the first h1 and then i see also the second h1 why can't i go down hello there we go so i see the first h1 Um, and then I can see that. Let's say I want to console.log heading zero. 
maybe I want to just kind of know or get the first one I could do that also it's not defined in index.html because I haven't gone through each of them so for bar Oh, no, that's for a change. Let me do that later. Let me not get into that right now. Um, maybe I can only do that when I have a for loop. Anyway, let me move on. All right, maybe this is now that's the part that I have to do it. Now that you store the headings, you're going to use a for loop to iterate over them and change the text to something like blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's what I was trying to do right now. So for bar... i is equal to zero heading el dot length is less than zero i plus plus uses a constant value on the primitive that's what use collection length for the end of the condition huh what let me go back i'm gonna have to reference back to the video Interesting, so why couldn't I see this before? It should have worked when I did that. Hmm. This should have worked. Is it because there's no semicolon? Weird. is less than so the variable i is equal to zero and as long as i is less than the length um wait heading el dot length the i has to be less than that and then i has to be plus plus every time this happens and then i can make a change to it so i can get document no heading zero dot inner html hello world Interesting. Why is this saying, oh no, it was insane, I did it, like, girl was confused. Alright, so I just kind of want to go over this part because this is more like pure JavaScript, which I didn't even bother going back to. I felt like I was going to waste my time if it's just like simple stuff that I can learn on the way. Um, so, a for loop, right? So it's for these conditions and then do this thing and then apply these conditions each time this happens. So there's a variable i, it's set to zero. As long as i is less than the length, add um, one up, right, to i. And then for each i, or I could say, I guess, for me, for it to make sense, maybe I can just do a variable heading, right? And as long as the heading is, um, 
less than the heading, the amount of headings there are in the length of the array, I can get um, each heading and change this inner HTML to hello world. Um, but I don't see that happening. Hello. Interesting. Let me try doing it here. So for the script, right, there is a variable, I'm going to call it heading element, and it's going to be equal to the document dot get elements by, oops, by tag name. And then the element that I'm getting is an h1. And then to see if I got that, I can do console.log heading el. Save that. And it should give me the array, right? Perfect. OK. Um, now, if I were to want to be able to see a certain, like, let's say the first one this should work but it didn't work last time oh now it works great that's that's great um okay so that's good okay and then if i want to see the second one i believe they say the same thing don't they so i can do heading l and get the second one which would be one right are you serious oh it's because i didn't spell it right Perfect. And then, right, if I want to change something now, I have to iterate through that array. So I have to do four and then and then in here I would have to do well first of all let me put the conditions. So a variable called heading, maybe I'll do heading count is equal to zero. And then as long as the heading count is less than the array length, then I can do heading count plus plus, right? So that adds one. And then as those conditions are being followed, I would like the heading, the array for each heading, I guess count or for each heading, right? I would like the inner HTML to be changed to allo. And that should work. And if it doesn't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. See, it doesn't change. H1. I wonder why it doesn't change. <sighs> it's literally not making sense. Hmm. A runtime error, check your console for more information. <laughs> Let me just start over. All right, so the first thing is use blah, blah, blah to find all the headings and store them in a variable. So, right, so all of the headings would be inside the body. It would be like this one, right, and this one, and they're all um, with, within the h1 tag, so I'll just do var heading, set it equal to document dot get element by tag name, right, put that in there, <gasps> elements, okay. And then move on. Second step is to use a for loop to iterate over them and change the text to something like hello world or allo. So I would do for. Oops. So here a variable called heading count. Set that to zero. 
Um, and then the heading count has to be less than the length of the headings. So this would actually make sense if I just do headings because they're plural. And then um, I would do heading count plus plus so that that occurs. Um, the count gets one up or increases every time the heading count is still less than the length of the actual headings. Um, and it starts with zero. Okay. And then in here, whew, I would just do heading count. So for each in headings, for each heading, I guess that would make sense. Heading count or heading. I should get the inner HTML and change it to allo. Why is it not working? Headings, heading, count. What does this mean? About. I am so confused. It's not working. Why? It should. Oh, it's like hello, like hello, hello world. It's literally not changing. Is it me? Am I the problem? Am I the drama? <gasps> What if I just copy the code from here and see if that would work? And maybe it's me. Oh, is it supposed to be? Oh, wow, I'm so dumb. Bro, like, come on, not me. Okay, you know what? Let me not be harsh on myself. Um, So all I did wrong was for some reason I was using Oh, I was using the notation here, like, to, like, access instead of actually, you know, setting it equal to. All right. Um, so that works. Um, and then I could also change it to hello world. Okay. That's, that's nice. Let me finish the challenge. All right. Um, I think I'm going to end that. All right. Uh, by today. I mean, I'm going to think I, I can't even speak right now. I think I'm going to end it as it is right now. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Bye.